Okay, let's get going. Game number one. Here we go. All right. So. Okay, so we get E4 on move number one. Now, for, at the lower levels, I really only recommend either... I would say E5, C5, or C6. Any other move you can't play. So let's play the Karo Khan. E5, C5, C6, only three moves. I do not recommend the French. I do not recommend hyper systems like the modern. Give your opponent too much space. You got to go E5, C5, C6, nothing else. Karo Khan, I mean, if your opponents play the advance, I think it can be a very scary opening to play as well. But still, the plans are relatively straightforward nonetheless. Try to learn the Sicilian, but it's hard. More than anything, I would say it's about open positions. That's why actually the Karo Khan, normally most people at this level do not play the advanced. Um, so I think it's pretty decent. But if you get th these sorts of positions, it's pretty hard to play in general. So I'm going to go C5 and Knight 6. I'm taught this is very much the beginner level, you guys. Okay, now he goes there, which is a decent move, but not best, because now he has a slight problem with the chain. Normally, you would like to have the pawn on C3 so you can build this wall of pawns. Like, he'd love to put this pawn here so he can have the chain, but he doesn't get the chain of pawns, so now he has some slight problems long term. I'm going to go Rook C8 here, try to put pressure on the C file. Plays Bishop E3. I'm going to take the pawn here. If he takes with the knight, I can just take the pawn. And now I'm simply up one pawn here. I've got the Rook on the open file. I can trade the Queens after Queen B5 check. And I'm looking very good. So let's start finishing our development. Let's go Knight F6. I played the French from 700 to 1600. I mean, you can definitely play it if you know it. I just think it leads to a lot of positions where you don't have much space. And it's very easy to uh, get a bad position. Generally, I think I, openings that have straightforward plans are the best at the, at the absolute beginner level. Now my opponent goes knight f3 which is slightly wrong because he's already down one pawn in the center of the board so i'm gonna trade just i think i'm gonna go a6 just to not hang this pawn and i'm gonna cast my king out of the center on the next next move i think at like 15 1600 the french is completely fine i just think it's an absolute beginner um yeah uh i think the uh uh what was i gonna say i think if you're a complete beginner i think openings that have straightforward strategies are good uh and the whole market is falling if you played options on nvidia you're smoking crack yeah i didn't i'm glad i didn't i looked both ways i looked long and short i didn't like either one and thankfully i didn't do do it because honestly if i'd gone long nvidia last night i, I would have been on a stream i'd be like ah oh, 517 yeah baby i'm getting my 300 percent yeah let's go um mind you you could have won very big on nvidia actually like if you had straight calls because then you could have bought the straight calls and you could have you could have you could have sold in the box where you you basically sell share short um and you would have just crushed it actually uh let's go 94 here so now i'm protecting the pause nine e4 actually that would have been a great way to make a ton of money on nvidia if you had straight calls when it was at like 517 you would you just sell short at 517 you sell in the box and you would have crushed it but anyway okay we got bishop e3 enough finance talk we're here to play chess not talk about finance let's go bishop g5 to try and trade some bishops because i have one extra pawn here so he takes i'll play queen takes g5 here i'm pretty sure almost nobody understood what i just said actually because that's pretty i'm starting to get into really dank like dank advanced concepts like queen g5 here probably like rook c8 and rook c2 um so all right waiting for a move here uh rook c1 is played now i'm up a pawn here but what i want to do is i my opponent played rook c1 which is a good move to claim the file i'm gonna go queen d2 here to try to put pressure on the queen side maybe go for an ice skater with queen e1 as well yeah yeah no shambaz i can tell you what i'm saying is basically like so let's just say hypothetically when nvidia was like 475 if you bought i don't know let's just say you bought I, again this is hypothetical because i don't know the exact price but let's say you bought like four 485 calls for like i don't know let's just say it was like five dollars of course this isn't what it was priced at but just hypothetically if you were to buy 485 for five dollars um that means that at, at um at 520 for example you you would sell short and you would lock in um You'd lock in $30 gain, and then you would win on the whole downswing to 475 as well. So you'd basically like make make a ton of money. You'd make like four or five hundred percent. I'm gonna go Queen C2 attack the rook and attack the pawn here. Yeah.
So let's see what um what happens. Uh, my title's about the World Cup tiebreaker. Oh, sorry, let me change it. Um high title. We go insane. Let's let's change it to something that, that all the meme streamers would put. We go insane again. Okay, there we go. A completely insane title. Let's go 92 and hit the uh hit the rook on f1 and hit the queen on f3. I'm a nerd, yeah. I'm pr I'm I'm not a nerd, but thank you. I mean, I actually follow sports and all those other things. Yeah, a last stream forever, right? Put the title as last stream forever. That's what that's the other way to do it. But no, 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 we're a ways from that, you guys. That's not happening anytime soon. That will happen one day, but we're at least a couple of years off from that, if not further. Um, now I have uno do I have ichi ni san yon go roku nana ichi ni san yon go. I have two extra pawns, so I'll just sack and simplify the position. Let's go here, run the king to the center, and I should win the game. Go here and play e5. Go e5 and king, uh, king c5. I love sports. I do love sports. Um, uh, should a beginner sack like that? Yes, if it's a, a position where it's only pawns on the board. If it's only pawns on the board and you have extra pawns, you can afford to sack. Uh, you said why not she? Because you can use both, but I think she has a negative connotation. Um, yeah. You can use either one, but you can use four and seven have multiple, multiple ways of saying it in Japanese. So you can say it either way, you guys. Um, I mean, of course, it's yekto, se, char, pan, shish, half, half, no, da. Come on. You think I don't know how to count in every language on the face of the earth? Be serious. Uh, I'm a nerd after all. Let's play B5. I'm going to go A5 here, maybe A4, D4, and we go from there. Um, so plays H5. I'm going to play H6 here. Um, now I'm just gonna make sure you can't get a pass pawn on any side of the board here. Let's go F6 here, maybe A4. Let me hear your Swahili, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. I'm not I'm not an AI. If I was AI, I could do that. Okay, now I'm just gonna push D4. I have to connect four. Let's just take. I'm gonna create the wide peepos here, and he can't stop them all. So he can't stop the wide peepos. I just keep pushing. He can't stop both. Just take the pawn. Go a2, and then he goes here, and he can't stop both. It's like it, it's like you can't stop them all. Let's play queen f3, and now I checkmate. Let's go king c4. Am I hyped for some live action? What live action? Go here, and now I made him on d2 or b2. Yeah, if he went this way, I have queen d2. Now I have queen b2. I am I hyped for Madway? Yes, I am. We're gonna play Madway a little bit later on. Um. Yeah. Get e4. Uh I'm going to play uh I'll play e5 this time. Let's play uh something let's play e5 knight c6 here. Keep it a little bit straightforward. Okay, he plays bishop c4, classic Gucci piano. Now in the Gucci piano, I think bishop c5 is is probably at the beginner level the best way to play it. Knight f6, knight g5 allows a fried Fabiano. You don't really want to allow like knight g5 lines. So at a beginner level, uh, I strongly recommend you play bishop c5 instead of knight f6 because you don't want to get your liver fried. Um, so let's play h6. And now I'm gonna go d6 and castles. Very standard. H6 is to stop bishop g5 pinning the knight. Well, castle, no bishop g5, a4. His idea is to play b4, bishop b6, a5. So I'll create space for the bishop to keep spying on the diagonal. Let's drop back. So now b4 doesn't do anything here. Why is it called the fried liver? Um, I don't know. The technical term is el. Um, wait, it's it's Italian, not Spanish. So it's a il 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 fegatello. I don't know um why it's called that. If I'm being honest, but it is. So I move my king, move my knight, and push the pawn. Try to put pressure here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let me see if they actually say why it's called called that. Yeah. Yeah. History. It's no the earliest known example was a game played in 1606 by Ju Julius Caesar Polario. Okay, let's play knight h7 and f5. Try to play uh, here on this f file. I, I move the king so there's nothing on this diagonal. 
So let's go F5. Let's open it up here. Try to attack. Yeah. Okay. It's, 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 it's named, it's called the Fegatello attack. It's named after an Italian dish. I, I don't understand how you call a chess opening. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand why, why would you name a chess opening after a dish of food? I don't get it. Uh, let's take and play on the F file again. Yeah, I mean, you, you tell me those Italians. Very strange. Let's take on H3. If he takes, I take the knight. Oh, that's true. Well, the B feeder is not the correct term for that opening. They just call it that. Yeah. But yes, the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, yeah, the uh, the fried liver has apparently been known. They say the first example was by was played by Julius Caesar Palerio. Um, that's kind of weird. They they have a page on a dude from the 1500s, an Italian chess player from like the mid 1500s. That's crazy. I'm gonna go Bishop G4, pressure the knight. Again, a lot of pressure here on this F file. Now I just take, and I mean this just isn't going very well. He's gonna move the king. I'm gonna take the knight and play queen h4 and checkmate him on the king side. Do I like Italy? I've spent a good chunk of time in Italy. There's good and bad. Um, you know, I think from a historical standpoint, there's there's a lot of history in Italy. I'm gonna play e4 here. Maybe knight's three. Maybe d4. A lot of history in Italy for sure. Um, um, let's play in honor of Magnus Carlsen. Let's play the Alpin or the c3 Sicilian. I mean, I speak Italian, so I, I should have a pretty good idea of what it's like. I think what I would say about Italy is in general, like great story, great, I mean, great history. I mean, la storia è molto, molto bella, pero um, la politica è una storia molto, molto diversa. Quindi, non lo so. Okay, we got queen b6 here. I am going to play um, bishop to e2 in castle. We're playing the advanced, um, we're playing the advanced French here. So uh, let's just castle. Um, and play like knight a3, knight b5 here. Goes bishop d7. I don't know what a5 actually does here. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do streams in other languages. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to play knight to a3 and take, uh, cd4, cd4 should be pretty good for me. Um, so yeah, um, I forgot what I was saying. I was saying something I forgot. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. So a5 could have been a slip. Maybe he meant a6. Now I've got this great chain of four here. These really, really solid pawns. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff historically that's good. The food can be great. I mean, problem with Italy is basically the system as I see it doesn't function ultimately. I think that's the bottom line. Um, um, okay, I'm going to go h4. The reason I'm doing this is because a lot of the play here revolves around the king side. So normally this is very advanced, so it's hard to explain. But normally I'm going to play for f4 and g4. And black plays h5, for example, when I move the knight and push. With his pawn here, he can't stop g4. So now I get to push the P on the king side with f4, g4 because the pawn is here, so he can't go h5 to stop g4. And knight f5 is actually a pretty good move. I'm trying to find a way to not make this. Should have gone to h2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct my error and go g4, knight h2. Let's go here and play g4, f4 like this. Goes g5, now I can take, but one of the reasons it's good to have the pawn at h5 is now I can play f4 and just attack. He's going to have this permanent weakness at the base in the long term. Let's take with the bishop so he doesn't have knight e5 due to the, due to the pin. Yeah. Okay, so he castles here, so... He's trying to get his king out of the center of the board. I don't think queen b2 is really a serious threat. So I think first thing I'm going to do is play g4 just to stop any jumps with the knight. Because now this bishop has very little scope on the diagonal. Bishop g7, so he's trying to take the pawn. So I'll sidestep any tricks on the diagonal here. Knight a5, logical. I think I will now play... How do I improve my position? I think I'm going to go rook b1 just to guard right off. It doesn't do anything special. I think I want to play bishop g3 and then attack him on the king side. Okay, let's see. So he goes knight c6. He's putting all these pieces on the queen side, but there isn't actually any action over there. So I think what I need to do here, how do I improve my position? I think I'm going to just go g5, actually. 
because with because of how close the center of the board is with these chains of pawns i'm not worried about anything happening over here so i will take and i think i will just go queen d2 because this pawn is safe bishop guards all these pieces are on the wrong side of the board effectively all this stuff it's on the wrong side okay trying to go knight f5 so i go here to cut him off no knight f5 now speaking of knight moves he plays knight f5 let's trade the knights i think i'm gonna go here and try to push the h pawn i need to rotate my knight to a better square let's trade i'm gonna go knight f1 knight e3 try to attack the pawns with my knight talking about the knight moves let's go here hit the pawn on d5 um yeah if i can get the knight moves with like 93 or knight g3 i'm doing pretty well now let's go knight here and i want to bring the rook in and slowly this outside pass pawn should win me the game i can take the pawn i trade i have an extra pawn here that i can just push up the board so now I just go Bishop G4 to get rid of one more piece because this Knight is out on the wrong side of the board like what is this Knight doing there's just nothing over here so this Knight is just all over the all completely on the wrong side of the board and now I'm just going to push the pawn up the board and win the game keep pushing Magna said that he won't play over the board chess until 2024 what do you mean over the board or what what do you mean by he won't you mean he won't play classical till 2024 right let's go here rook h1 and push push the pawn keep pushing the p go here guard the pawn threaten the queen i think now i just run the king up and play rook g8 to force piece off the board hmm how do i win this game it's not easy I think maybe I just walk the dog or walk the king. Yeah, I just walk the king up the board. Uh, I said he's done with classical until 2024. Isn't he playing the Qatar Masters or am I crazy? Wait, what? Go check. The, I, I mean, are you guys baiting me? I'm going to go A3 just to lock it. Nothing weird can happen over here. Qatar is over the board, yeah okay now I think here I can actually take if I want to but I can also just play for Zugzwang in honor of the Germans let's play rookie two opponent doesn't really have any moves that he can play here okay now I think I go rook to e8 if he takes 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 he loses the knight if he takes 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 he loses the knight but he's losing the knight no matter what and now I can we can just like king f5 if knight h7 i take if he takes with the rook i swap off everything here uh we get king g7 uh i am david martinez an article for trust chess before wrote that carlson announced this morning a brief press conference in almaty where the rapid no but that's not that's not right now what are you talking about that almaty that's a different event Good check. How do I win this game? This is very weird. I don't see an actual way to win. I'm trying to figure out how the knight moves. Maybe I just go here and I just force him to trade everything off the board. Okay, so let's let's move the knight and trade the knights and then just run the king over and win the, win all the pawns knight moves let's block with the rook and now the knight moves to f no it doesn't work let's go here and now knight f7 wins check and the knight moves just finish the game off 
Okay, playing a 690, so now, now this will be back to base. This plays E4. Another opening I like at the beginner level is the uh, Scandinavian opening, because it's pretty easy to play. There's really only one big issue you have to worry about, generally, which is not getting your queen uh, attacked on this long diagonal from the king to A5 after takes here. But in this game, the guy plays knight C3, so I'm going to go D4 here. Knight D5 is a little bit weird, because his horse, I don't know where his horsey is going. Trying to bring his horse again, but this is not a true bastion because I can kick the horse with c6. And now I kick the horse with c6, and the horse is actually dead. The horse is nowhere to go. Um, it's simply game over. He got his horse trapped. His horse is nowhere. His horse can't move. Yeah, the horse is simply dead. Um, yeah. Uh, scan scan is amazing if you know it too. Really bad. If you don't, that's also true. So yeah, so the horse is gone. Here we get D3. Let's play knight f6 here. Go bishop g4. Simply trade pieces. Because again, I have two bishops and two knights. He has two bishops and a knight. So I have one extra minor here. So I will castle, trade the bishop for the knight, and should be pretty simple to win. Just take. Good knight bd7. So. All right. Okay, he plays bishop g5. Let's go bishop e7 and trade. I just saw there was a Wall Street Journal alert. Prigozhin. Yeah, of course, Prigozhin was assassinated. What else is new? Duh. Let's take on d4 here. Now, I'll go knight e5 to trade the knight for the bishop here. I, at this point, since I sim simply have extra material, I should trade everything. Uh, let's take the bishop let's not take the queen here i i don't i mean i want to show you guys how to win this position with extra materials uh chess players are not allowed to wear watches during during games uh because of technology i actually would say i think that's one of the biggest mistakes that's happening um is i think that like mechanical watches should be allowed and the reason that i think it should be allowed i'll tell you guys why um is very specifically because if you do proper scanning and you can scan like just mechanical watches i feel like the opportunities to have um to have watch sponsors is huge and i think it's a huge market that's lost because of that because i can't really it's hard i'm hard pressed to think of something that i can associate more with chess than time and i think it's a huge mistake like i think there's there would be a very good chance that, like rolex or any of those companies would, would be in, be interested in sponsoring chess if that was allowed so i think it's a huge mistake to just not have um not have a uh, not have uh, more uh more like just have security and just make sure like obviously smart watches can't be allowed we know that but like i just when i think of chess chess and time i feel like are the single two biggest um two biggest uh th two things that have the biggest connection i want a free rolex i already have a free rolex because i won the tournament in switzerland three times in a row so i have my deep sea uh my deep sea somewhere in my house i don't know where but i do um we get another carl con i'm gonna take and play the standard bishop f5 and e6 here um, but yeah, I really think that like, like, for example, I'll give you another, I'll give you another example. Let's play E6, Knight, E7, Knight, F6, typical Karo Khan. Um, what I was going to say is, uh, um, can you imagine, like, I bet it wouldn't be too hard to get like some kind of collaboration with Rolex where they would make, like, make some chess clocks. I mean, I don't think that's like too much either. Can you imagine Rolex making chess clocks? Like I, that would be pretty, that'd be pretty sexy. No, go here. um okay let's just castle out of the center of the board okay now i'm gonna go um knight d5 i want to go knight f4 and hit the queen and the bishop but also this bishop is kind of annoying so i might want to close the door with bishop f6 go knight f4 and trade the knight for the bishop yeah i mean I, that's that's basically what i would say is to me it seems like when i think about possible sponsors for chess i literally can't think of a better connection than chess and time also with the game becoming quicker like rapid chess like it's all about your time usage like time 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 so to me it seems um yeah it seems kind of a this is a free piece it seems seems kind of tragic that they can't just have a little bit more security like obviously smart watch could never be allowed but to not have like mechanical watches it's just it, it feels like a huge missed opportunity okay let's just take a bishop let's just take a queen my opponent's falling apart here keep going
Okay, I'm going to play... Uh, I played too much Karo Kong. Let's play a proper Scandinavian again. I seem to be getting black every game, which is kind of annoying. Um, but it is what it is. Let's take. Now, I'm going to go Queen A5 here. The main thing with the Scandinavian is you need to push the pawn and make sure you never get killed on this diagonal. You always have these squares available. Got to be very careful not to hang the queen. But otherwise, the setup is very basic. You just have to be careful, but you want to go very similar to a Karo Khan. Bring the bishop, the pawn, the bishop, and the knight. One, two, three, four. Bing, bang, boom. The knight of six here. Rolex only spawns in post sports like F1 and tennis. Yeah, but that's because there's never been an opportunity with chess. Since chess became really popular, um, all like watch and everything are banned. So take and now I go back again you got to be careful with the queen on this diagonal but you just want one two you want you want bishop two pawns push the knight out and it's a very simple setup with castles the, 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 these aren't rated games you guys in case you're wondering so it's not like I'm beating people and gaining or taking away the rating points so yeah and it's, it's quite different you guys so anyway I guess I will just castle here. How to join this arena? Uh, you need to be, be a member of the fan club. So we get bishop d3. I guess I will just trade the bishops here. Let's play rook d8. Put the rooks in the center. Try to put pressure on the center. My, my pawns are very, very compact here. Very, very well defended. Queen g3 is actually a very good move. Uh, I'm going to go knight d5 here to guard the queen in case he moves away. But also maybe take the bishop too. It's so terrifying to know 2,000 people are watching you play. Mm, happens. Goes Bishop D2. Now, I'm going to play F6, force him to trade the Knights. I don't like this Knight. It's all up in my business here. Take with the Queen to guard the pawn so I don't hang this. The Rolex don't crack under pressure theme is perfect for chess. Like I said, I'm going to go B5 to stop C4. To me, I can't think of a better connection than time. Time, like just since we obviously play with clocks and there's a time limit for every game, it just seems like the most obvious uh, sponsor for chess. But it is what it is. I'm going to go Rook E8 to guard the pawn. Keep this Rook here so that I always have ideas on this file. Goes C3, so I'll play A4. Now he can never kick the knight because he can't push the pawn because I take, and he can't push this one because I take. So these pawns basically stop him from doing anything on this side of the board. So, all right, let's keep going, you guys. A big shout out to everybody who's watching. Hope you guys are doing well. Obviously, I think most people right now are going through the the withdrawal from the uh, world championship so uh gonna be a little bit slower today i think than usual but um hope you guys are all doing very well so let's play queen d6 try to trade the queens queen h3 is a good move um maybe a very good move i think i have to go here to guard the pawn it's kind of annoying why aren't top chess players in america treated as sports celebrity because chess is not very important in the u.s Rookie four is a very good move too. I'm gonna go queen d7, sidestepping bishop f4. Okay, goes rook h4. I guess I'll go g6 to guard the pawn. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, I mean chess is just not the. I mean, in, in, I mean maybe in some places. I'm gonna go e5, offer the trade of queens, and try to play on the d file. It's it's actually tricky, but we'll see. Elon says chess is too simple, but it's in his cars. Tesla's getting hammered today again, I think, right? The AM okay, NVIDIA is trying to rally, but wow, AMD is down 7%? Wow. AMD is down 7%. That's insane. Okay, we got Bishop E3 here. Uh, I'm going to play Knight to D5. And I'm going to go F5 here so I can take the pawn at E5 and keep my chain intact. take now it's really good because look at my pieces everything except my rook is on white i've got all my pawns on light squares king and rook are on light squares knight on light squares bishop can't touch anything and so if the bishop can't touch anything then uh i should win the game 
let's trade and let's go rookie four now all my pieces are on the opposite color of his uh his bishop so this is just great for me everything's on the opposite color I will trade and now I'm gonna go like uh check a knight c4 and go after these pawns yeah it's just amazing this bishop can't do anything it just can't do anything at all it's just everything's on the wrong color go here I think I go c5 now because when he moves the bishop I fork him with knight c4 and that should be gg anyone know what Benjamin Bach is up to I haven't seen him in a minute I don't know what Bach is up to um not sure goes to e4 okay let's play Scandinavian again okay so we get knight c3 so I think again I'm gonna play d4 this time am I getting black every game by the way I feel like I've been black every game haven't I did I mess something up with how I do it I've been black in every game right I'm gonna play c5 protect the pawn in the center and then develop the knight I think I have had black in every single game oh did I oh is it a bug or did I do the arena wrong I might have done the arena wrong but it doesn't matter yeah it is what it is it was c3 okay I'm gonna play e5 build a big black center here so yeah anyway um now I need to develop I've, I've pushed these pawns so now I try to develop the Knights and the Bishops develop these uh, develop the Bishops and Castle the King so yeah the plan for today is we're gonna be doing this arena I believe at one o'clock there's the SEC um SEC knockouts where whoever gets in might play me in the first round so I probably will cover that for a little bit we're gonna play Madway later on and that's more or less gonna be the plan for today now I'm gonna do hmm. no we're doing we're doing this at the beginner level not the advanced level if I was playing at the advanced level I'd go g5 g4 to claim a ton of space on the king side but we're not gonna do that because people won't be able to emulate that that's like when you know it's, it's like it's like when um what's it like it's like when Tiger Woods goes and goes and like he there's there there's that old um I know this makes me sound like boomer but there's that old Nike ad where he's literally bouncing a ball on a stick and then finally after 10 time he takes it and he hits that great drive um it's the same thing playing g5 g4 looks really really cool but I'm the only one who can do that I mean or top players obviously so people who are going to watch this video on YouTube and watching right now on stream they can't do that so it's not really right to play like that so I'm gonna go g6 here to drop the bishop back and then maybe push f5 down the road uh it doesn't really I'll tell you why it g5 would not weaken my king it wouldn't weaken the king because I can still castle to the queen side that's the reason what are these American things who's this tiger tiger woods if you don't know who tiger woods is uh I I, I think you really need to touch grass like hardcore touch grass um <laughs> okay now I'm gonna go a6 and b5 try to play on the side this is one advantage here is like I have a lot of flexibility to castle either way with my king yeah let's push b5 try to open up this side of the board as well here if he doesn't if he doesn't take I can always take and then use the b file as well okay so he does it so now it's getting kind of scary here I think I know who Tiger Woods is he's he's friends with my wife okay dude cool story cool story where do I park my jet I don't have a jet you guys sorry it's super expensive like it, it's very expensive now I'm gonna play H just kick this knight out of town and I can always take the pawn um or play Bishop B6 I think I mean let's just take the pawn and go for the kill on the a file it's not 10 grand for a ride you guys it's much more it's like it's like um I think it's close to 50,000 for uh to get to charter a private plane from uh Florida to LA it's a lot of money like it's it's a lot of money get knight c3 I think there should be a checkmate here somehow maybe not no I'll just take the knight keep it simple yeah let's go let's castle the king out of the center of the board 
Yeah, it's very expensive. Um, how much to buy one? God only knows. God only knows. Play Bishop G4. I just want to go after the Knight. The Knight is pinned. The Rook is in trouble. I'm going to take and go Knight D4. We have a great Bash in here. He can't remove the Knight. And I'm threatening to fork with Knight B3. So a lot of options here. Now, I could take the Bishop, but we, I would much rather fork the King and the Queen with Knight B3 and win the game. This is unrated. Yes, this is unrated. No, I mean, come on, you guys. Seriously, like, it's that's such a waste of money. Honestly, this is also, I'm sure people would be surprised to hear me say this, but, um, you know, I can pretty much, like, if I fly from L.A. to Florida or, like, something like that, like, I'm not actually going to, like, waste money on business class. Like, it's like a five-hour flight within the U.S. Like, there's no reason to spend, like, $2,000. I'll just fly, I'll fly in the back with everybody else. This is just checking with Rookie at one next move. So let's keep going. Can you and Magnus play the qualifier? There's no qualifier today. Today is the knockout. Um, okay, let's play E4. I always believe E4 is best by test. Fly like top G in private. Thank you, guys. Like I said. Um, let's go Bishop C4 and D3 here. Saving for Porsche. <laughs> Very funny, you guys. Nah, I don't need it. No, I'm happy with my Honda Civic, you guys. Let's play Knight F3 here. Oh, I finally got white in a game. Yes, I'm finally white. Um, someone's going to clip that out of context. So let's be careful. So we're playing a bit of a Gucci piano. I don't know why I played the Gucci piano, but let's go C3 and D4 to open up the center of the board. Um, and we'll go from there. So pretty, pretty normal stuff so far. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's going to, um, yeah. Yeah. Someone's going to clip that out of context. Let's play Knight D2. Um, I'm playing Knight D2 so I can take, I also maybe want to move the queen, but mainly I just want this Knight. I want a Knight on the square so I can push towards the center of the board. So that's why I want this Knight here to recapture with the Knight and then push. So I take with the Knight and now it supports the push again with D4 next move. Castle Fabiano does not have a Tesla. In fact, I don't think Fabiano has a driver's license even. Very few top players drive you guys. Very, very few drive. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, like, Magus is a Tesla, but he doesn't drive. His dad drives the car because he doesn't have a license. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's very, very few top players actually drive. Very few. Let's drop back so he can't eat the juicer. Also, Bishop is on a great diagonal here. What do they do then? I don't know if you guys know, but most top players are in Europe. And in Europe, you generally can get around with this thing called public transportation. It's not like America where you have to drive everywhere because we, you know, it's just not the same. Take the pawn here on e5 it takes i just take on f7 because the diagonal crushes no magnus carlson takes the train very frequently in norway from what i've heard yeah like magnus takes the train very frequently that's that's what i've been told let's take on d5 i don't want to hang this pawn e4 so play d4 and knight g4 i can't use public transportation because i hate the public okay dude go d4 create the classic connect five here and target the bishop now i can scope with the bishop but because this diagonal is now closed by the way i'm probably going to reroute the bishops and try to use them on these two diagonals eventually step one pin the tail on the donkey with bishop g5 can't move the horse because then you hang your queen and then i'm going to go bishop c2 next move and then i really want to try to use these diags maybe in the double a battery with bishop c2 and queen d3 did I try to grab a master in the World Cup? Yes, I did. Um, again, I've streamed like nonstop since like late 20, late 2019. So of course. Goes queen c7. Now what this does allow me to do though, is I can start to get kind of, um, I can ruin his pawn structure on the king side. And it is very scary. If your king gets open, open here on the king side with pawns like f7, f6, and h7. After knight g4, it's very hard to play. Next event for me will be the St. Louis 960 event being held in St. Louis, Missouri uh, from September 8th to 10th. Uh, players feature Fabiano Caruana, myself, and Gary Chess, also known as Gary Kasparov. He will be playing there as well. Yeah. 
So again, a lot of problems. This king is in trouble. If you ever get pawns stacked like this in front of your king and there's nothing, no protection in front, like on this G file, it generally means you're in really, really bad shape. Uh, no Gucci resin, no Magnus. I believe it's all the American players. I have the list somewhere um, um, of who's playing. Civiller is not there. Let me see. What is the list? Um, let me find the list. Uh, where's where's the list? I'll tell you guys in a second. The players are the following. You have Hikaru Nakamura. You have Fabiano Caruana. You have Gary Kasparov. You have Levon Aronian. You have Wesley So, Lenny Dominguez, Samuel Shankland, Ray Robson, Jeffrey Zhang, and Samuel Sevian. Those are the players, you guys. He goes up five, so I can play Knight of Six or Knight of Six. I'm going to check here and take. Um, are you playing despite the controversy? I mean, I agreed to play this event quite a while ago, first off. Um, secondly, I mean, like, I, I can I can do what I want to do. Let's play King H1. So, yeah. Yeah, let's go G3. And now my opponent turned himself into a Robert James Bishop. Or Roger... Roger... Blah, blah, blah. Robert James Fisher. He takes... I just take back because he trapped his bishop in the corner. So now I'm up a piece. I want to go here, Queen H5, and attack him on the king's side, basically. Roger Federer. Yeah, I don't know what I was, I was saying the wrong thing. Okay. Um, let's just take and go like Queen F3 here. Trade the queens, guard the pawn. Should be pretty straightforward. Robert James Bishop. Yes. Exactly, you guys. Yeah. Anyway, that yeah, so we're playing that on September 6th to 10th. So it's gonna be pretty hype. We'll have coverage here on our on our kick channel, of course. Now here, take the queens off the board. Nobody wants queens, so let's trade them, especially not online. Nobody has a queen. Um, so let's go rook f1, stack the two rooks. Now it's an endgame with two rooks and a bishop versus a rook and a knight. And I'm just gonna I'm actually just gonna sack the rook. So now he only has one rook that's dangerous. Just simplify the board here. Go check, move the, remove the king, and now let's trade the rooks. Bishop guards it. No squares available. Get rid of all the all the big pieces on the board, and now I just win with the bishop and the pawn. So let's take. Will Levy and Anna cover the tournament? Uh, Levy and Anna have not covered tournaments on my channel in, I want to say, two years, over two years now. Um, okay, next game, let's play e4. We're playing 1830, so this will be a little bit more serious. If he plays knight of six, of course, it's called the uh, Aliekin's defense. I'm going to play what I played as a child, which is e5 to attack the knight. c4, attack the knight. Let's keep on attacking the horse. And now I will play knight to c3 here. And take... Now this is a situation where you take from the... Uh, you take away from the center because I need to open up scope for the bishop. So I need to open up this diagonal. That's why I took with the d-pawn. And now I'm going to play h4, h5. Try to attack him very, very quickly. He goes to h5 to stop me from pushing p. But now he creates a juicy hole on g5 for my horse. So let's go knight f3, knight g5 with bishop c4. Uh, let's go here to guard the pawn with bishop f4. He can't really push d6 because I'm overprotecting the square with the bishop, the pawn, and the queen. And now this is really, really bad. Really bad for my opponent. Very, very hard to play. Uh... <laughs> Okay, you guys, chill. Um, chill. Let's play queen d3 to target the pawn. <laughs> she's six. Jeez, you guys are ridiculous. Let's play queen d3. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go to b5. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let's let's be serious. Let's go bishop a4. Um, <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to go bishop c2. My idea here is to play g4 and open up the king's side. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go... Um, actually, here I'm going to play g4. I'm just going to go all in and try to attack right away. Um, now, he can take a pawn, but I get queen e3. And the bottom line here is that with all these pieces near the king's side, it should be very easy to attack. Yeah. He's got no development. Like, you look at these pieces, they're all in the back rank. No development. Even the bishop is very passive. So I'm trying to play against his lack of development, essentially, here, and try to crush him on the king's side. Okay, let's just go h5. I don't care. Like, let's just sack. I don't care. I'm going all in for the big kill here. Yeah.
The chat has been rated for immature. Now I'm gonna go bishop h6 again, trying to attack on the king side here and just crush him immediately. Again, nothing matters in chess other than checkmating the king. Um, so even though he's got all these extra pieces, they're all kind of on the wrong side of the board, and the, his monarch is over here. So again, it's it's like real life. You know, it, it doesn't. You, you got to do everything to protect the king. So yeah. Every funny thing in stream would have been missed due to ads if we were on Twitch. That's true. By the way, once again, those of you guys who do want to support me, if you sub to the channel, I do get a 95-5 sub split. So instead of being on Twitch where you get like, uh, you get 50-50, it's actually 95-5. So it's pretty, pretty huge, as they would say. Um, I think I'm just going to trade the B shops. Again, no development. All these pieces, wrong side of the board, I take. And if I can, if I can make King Charles then it's gg why not so very very scary for my opponent here very scary in fact i think this is very close to checkmate rook h8 might be the only move to stop stop me from checkmating with queen h6 now i'm gonna castle long again black has extra pieces but look at all these pieces they're just not in the action here not in the action at all takes okay now here i think I'm gonna go rook g1 try to mate him on the g file he can trade but then i take if he takes i take and then i go queen h6 now i sack the rook and again it doesn't matter because none of these pieces have moved he's got three pieces that are not in the game they're just out of the action so even though he has all this extra material if they aren't in the game you lose as they as the, as the saying goes you know ea sports it's in the game or it's just not in the game at all and you just lose every game yeah <laughs> yeah the king is dead king charles is done here he's just done maybe king william can do a better job now i will just take the pawn if the king moves it's just checkmate if knight f4 i just take the knight it's, it's gg why not i'm in a silly goofy mood oh i'm sorry um let's go check oh and and peasant is M peasant is oh that's so sad N peasant is almost checkmate there is no way to play N peasant with checkmate that's very sad that would be that would be glory if this was checkmate but it's not because the king runs so I guess I'll just make the checkmate instead that's very sad very sad yeah very sad but it is what it is as the saying goes um Okay, good d4 okay now i'm gonna play a uh, standard knight f6 here okay let's just play um at the beginner levels i think playing the queen's gambit decline is probably better let's play d5 please Icar, you are better than this what do, what do you mean by that so i'm just playing, my opponent's playing the classic uh separatist opening also known as the catalan opening where if you try to get your independence you get thrown in jail so um, it's a decent opening in chess. It's probably not as decent of an opening when you're dealing with the European Union, but that's a story for another day. In chess, at least, it's it's um, it's somewhat respectable. It's castle. Okay, now at the beginner level, I don't really recommend trying to play the the obvious line. So I'm gonna go b6 and bishop b7. Yeah, Brussels doesn't take kindly to such things, you guys. Yeah, you try to separate? No, 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 no. You go to jail for that. You go to jail for such talk. Let's play bishop b7. Okay, I think now I'm going to take to open up the scope on the diagonal here. And I'm going to play like knight d7 or c5. Um, actually, let's play c5, try to trade off some pawns here and just get the double double scope with the bishop on c5 and the bishop on, on b7. Goes bishop a3, so I'll take. The reason I'm going to trade the pawns here after takes takes is that basically he ends up with a uh, isolated weak pawn here that has nothing to protect it. So he's going to take, I'm going to take, and then I'm going to go like rook c8. I'm going to, my pawns are all very nicely connected, this chain and this chain, but he's got this one little island here. I guess both these can become pawn islands because um, they can't be protected. If you could put this pawn on b3 where it could connect, like here, then white would be fine, or this one here. But the pawns are split. It's like in bowling when you get the like the split pins. Uh, it's not a good thing. You don't want to get split pins in bowling, and you don't want to get split pawns in chess either. So let's go rook d8. Now if he takes, I can take due to the pin and play e5 to win the game.
The World Cup ending feels kind of like when you're done watching a season of the show and you don't know what to do with yourself afterwards. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's why I think that's why I think our viewership is so much lower today. I think everyone's just burned out. I'm not surprised, by the way, because even with the World Chess Championship, it's the same thing. If the World Chess Championship is very close, like the Nepo, Nepo, uh, the Nepo Ding match, or even Magnus Fabiano, if it goes to tiebreakers, it's like you're every day you're on the you're on the edge of your seat, and then just ends, and you're like, uh, uh, what do I do? So let's go check. Let's check the king first, and I'm gonna play e5. Because on e5 there was maybe a knight f5 trick. So I'm just gonna play e5 and win win the horse. So yeah. All right, we get f3. Let's go e5, pin the knight here, and win either the horse or the queen. So yeah. The only thing I would say about the World Cup and the World Championship is to me, again, like, I know the events were very exciting and everything that, that sort of masks, uh, that masks one of the problems, but there is a problem with the fact that in, in, in these events, they are not decided in classical chess. Like, they are not decided, they're, they're essentially decided in blitz and rapid, not in the main format of the event. And I know everyone likes to gloss that over, but it, it, it is, in my opinion, a legit reason that I, I begin to question why, why does classical chess really matter? When all these all these events end up being decided in the format that is not the actual format of the tournament, it does make me wonder. So let's go B5 and break the pawn chain here. Yeah. Okay, let's just trade off pieces here and then win the pawn in the center of the board. So. Let's see what we get here from, um, from Magnus. Uh, maybe he'll play like Queen C1, maybe Queen E2. We'll see. Uh, playing the draw is the player's fault instead of playing for the win. Um, well, I mean, I, I guess you just, oh, oh, we, this is the family fork. Let's go Knight E3. I fork everything. I fork the Rooks, I fork the Queen, and I fork the King too. Let's take the Queen. Go Rook C8, trade, trade off all the pieces here because now I just have an extra Queen on the board. Go rook e8, try to trade the rooks. Um, I'll trade a set of rooks. Now I just got to make sure not to allow the ice skater. So I'm going to create the Lufthansa with h6. So the king always has a square here to sneak away to. Um, let's go here. Now on rook e8, I just slide the king up. Very, very uh, safe king. So goes rook f2 now i'm gonna go here again very simple let's just get these rooks off the board get everything off the board and now with one extra queen on the board i just win the game go here i'm gonna try to checkmate him as fast as possible so we can get in one more game go h5 Run the king up. Okay, now I'm basically going to slide the king in and mate him with the queen. Go here, and now it's just mate in two. I go check, and then I mate him on g4 or h2, but g4 is simpler. Okay, let's play e4. One more to go. Um, what do we make casting illegal in chess without reduced draws? I don't actually know. So... Uh, this was the opening that I played as a child, the, the Grand Prix attack. I still think it's a very good opening at the beginner level. Wasn't Queen after Queen? Oh, there was there a quicker? You're right. There was a quicker, mate. You're right. That's true. You're right. That was quicker. Let's develop. Develop the Knights with these two pawns in front. It's a very nice opening setup. Let's go Bishop B5 here. Castle the King, then play D3, then open the scopes. And again, it's very easy to play here because after D3, now I get to Castle. Both Bishops are going to be developed. I can push F5 or E5. Very, very straightforward play. Let's Castle. I, I play Queen E2 first. So I don't want to let him trade the Queens off the board. So let's Castle. So now my Knights are out. King is out. I've got these nice pawns here in front of my pieces and now the key is to get the bishop in the game now i'm gonna do something unusual and play b3 to fianchito the bishop and try to attack him on this long diagonal do i think magus play the world championship the format change maybe but i don't know what format they could change it to that he'd be happy with let's go rookie one bring the rooks to the center of the board 
go here maybe knight f2 g4 g5 the d4 a good move because it actually blunts the force of the bishop on the diagonal I don't think Vita is going to change the format at this point though that's the mistakes of e5 forking the bishop and the knight let's just take can't save them both yeah I mean my, my general read is that Fide is not going to change if they weren't willing to change the format when Magnus was actually the world champion why are they going to change now I just don't see it now my knight on d1 not great no squares available for it so let's reroute it here go to e4 and target the bishop and the pawn activate the horse let's go f5 here try to open up the files for the rooks oh I can for I can create the fossil and the fork with knight f6 to end the game his interview is pretty nice I mean it, it mods if there's a link to his interview and I should I mean I can watch it depending on how long it is we have a little bit of time before the SEC qualifier uh or the SEC event begins so I could watch it okay we got the win um it's 14 minutes okay yeah um let me find it I think I think let's watch it actually let's watch it Let's, let's watch it. If it's only 14 minutes, I can definitely watch it.